Hello and welcome back to a uh, rather informative video, another fun one, uh, I'm afraid. Um, to the Germans uh, that, that accidentally got here, there's actually a German voiced uh, version of this. Uh, just right over there, just click the annotation on the right hand side and you'll get there. No need to uh, to hang around here. This is, this is for the English speaking audience, right? Right? Alright. So, um, now that we're all... Uh, not all aware that there's another version. Uh, hello, uh, I am. As you may have noticed, but probably didn't watch, uh, there was actually a similar video like this where I talked about the stats of my YouTube channel, uh, which I made about a year ago. Since then, lots of things have changed, and there were some interesting developments recently. So I'm gonna do another quick discussion about this in this video. But before starting this, I'm actually gonna uh, add some music. Uh, let me just hit, hit that button. All right, so sounds reasonable. Okay, good. So uh, let's talk about YouTube stats. So basically, um, it's been sort of three years since since I started this channel. The first video that I uploaded was on September in uh, 2013. So that was actually three years ago. But uh, I've only been uploading at least one video a day since um, since end of January in 2015, uh, 2014. So. It's not the way I see it. I haven't. I'm not at like three years already. But um, there's reasons that I'm gonna go into later in, in this video for why I'm doing this now and not in January. So um, I really don't like the viewing mode on this. Uh, anyway, um, some basic channel stats since then. I've uploaded about 1,400 videos in total. So if you divide that by three, then you would get to like. 450 videos per year, so it was more than one a day. That was some time in, I think, like one and a half years to two and a half years after I started the channel where I basically uploaded two any day, sort of. So, um, but, um, well, the current and also the peak number of subs is 147, which isn't quite as much, but uh, it's, it's what I have, so anyway. Um, and since then I've accumulated 1,300 likes and 33 dislikes. None of these are my own. I know that uh, quite a few channels uh, suggest that, especially in, in the beginning, you like your own videos. But I think um, I, 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 I'd be screwing my statistic with this quite a lot because I've, I've, I've uploaded 1,400. Assuming I would have liked them all, I would sit at like the double amount of likes, which I think is a little bit cheating. Anyway. Um, and also I have about 1,500 comments. There are some of my own in there because I tend to I tend to answer to comments that that, that other people gave. And also for some time the first uh, uh, the Google Plus message for each video did uh, did uh, appear in the comments as well and also counted as a comment. Um, they have changed that about a year ago. So there's also some just like that. So um, so all right. Um, uh, the average view time is about eight, mi eight minutes per video, which has actually decreased. This is the only stat that I've, that has actually decreased uh, in the last year, uh, and that's about 29% of the video length. And in total, I'm looking at like uh, uh, 69k views and about 580k minutes of view time, which is actually kind of nice. And especially in the last month, I had been I had been amazed uh, that I uh, got additional attention subs and also. Um, like more uh, more view time hours a day than uh, there are actually hours in the day, so I I really appreciate that. Anyway, the concept for this video is that um, I'd like to present some more detailed channel statistics again. I mean, I already did that, but that video on, it was in German only, so you probably didn't watch that, uh, or, and you probably also weren't here. So um, this will be made in order to focus uh, some some discussion about how specific Let's Plays perform stats-wise, and I also go into the demographics of some of the more successful ones, because I've made some interesting observations there. So basically, I will go through the stats of individual projects first, and then make some diagrams to visualize the points I'm trying to make, because it, I think it helps uh, to visualize that with diagrams, and not just uh, talk over it and present some numbers, because most people uh, have more difficulties in numbers, but if you present them with a with a diagram, and I say, okay, 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 that seems that seems interesting. Anyway, um, after that detour, I'll make some announcements regarding changes coming coming this way. 
Um, and there will also be some discussion regarding planned future projects. If you're not really interested in the stats, there's another annotation appearing right right now on the right hand side that you can click to just get to that uh, final piece of uh, of the talk. Because, um, well, I may realize that not all people are are, are interested in numbers as, as much as I am, but um, I'm a part-time mathematician, so I'm always interested in numbers, so um, that's that. Alright, so I've got some sheets prepared for this. Let's actually go there. All right, so uh, this is sort of an overview of all the projects that I've made so far. Um, let me let me go through what uh, what the individual columns are about. Basically, this is sort of self-explanatory. You can see the name of the projects, and then there's a there's a yes or no uh, on whether that was done in English or not. There's also some somewhere there's a no and a yes, which means in one case uh, that there was the audio of the game was in English but I um, presented it in German and here it was sort of the other way around because I sort of made the additional game audio in German but there was a lot of English text in the background so these are sort of special in a sense but uh, ever since Knights of the Old Republic I've tried to keep it as uh, to keep it in one language Anyway, then this is probably the most important, which is the sort of the view time of all the videos in the series brought, brought together. This is a number of videos that are, that are currently available for this, and this column is basically divide this number by the number of videos. So in, in order to gain sort of an average value of how many minutes uh, a video has been watched on average. There's of course that that that, that's not really the case because the first videos in the series will be watched more than than the latter ones so this is only so that I have some sort of number that that says to me a little bit about how successful the project was and then for each project I'll have some notes uh, with regarding to how these stats actually look because you can because you can also look at the at the view time and uh, the number of views and sort of uh, how they how they how they how they historically progressed and in some cases there are some interesting things to talk about and then I also give my own opinion to how the general project went aside from how it got uh, accepted or not by the audience but just uh, what I th personally think about it because there's some great uh, uh, well some some sort of issue that uh, some project that I really like really nobody watched and some projects that I said I could have done so much better uh, so yeah I uh, wish I could have been better, but people watched it anyway, so that's a little bit weird at times. And I sort of skipped this column, which is about the genre, which is sort of to just give you a brief overview of what the game is about if you don't know it. Um, anyway, uh, I'll omit most of the German projects because you, you haven't watched them and you're probably not going to watch them anyway, un unless they're interesting for future developments because I tried out things. Alright? So with that going, I'm going to go into the numbers down here a little bit later. And there's also diagrams down here, but, but I'll get to them later. So basically, let's go through the individual projects now, shall we? Alright, one of the more recent ones is Dragon Age Origins. Uh, I did it in German. Um, for being such a recent project, it's the average view time is actually kind of okay. Um, which is interesting because I tried something very different there. Basically doing only in-character roleplay and not really the normal uh, the normal commenting style that, I, that, that I've done uh, on RPGs, like uh, for Mass Effect, for instance, where I where I talked what my what my character was about to say, and then the character said it anyway again, and then I was also explaining stuff, which I basically omitted everything that wasn't character talking, unless this unless there was a, sp a special video in the series where I talked about mechanics, but then I only talked about mechanics and didn't do anything about story, so that was sort of um, let me actually skip that song. Um, so for Dragon Age Origins, um, it's still in progress, but for now the numbers are sort of better than I expected because I thought people would just uh, ignore it altogether, and uh, for that it has been doing reasonably well. Um, and I really loved doing it because it was sort of interesting for me to exp to experience the whole oh, what would my character actually say now, and not just uh, to some stupid stupid comments what, on what me as the player thought about at, at the moment so um, I personally loved it the audience seems to be a little bit unsure about the format and there's also been not too many comments about this although I really wanted to have feedback about this so 
I was doing this in order to try a style that I've tried with another project that I'll talk later um, about already and just try to see how if if that would solve my RPG problems because as 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 we'll see RPGs sort of have been performing way below my other genres so I was hoping I I might I'm, I might hit a nerve there but I'm not sure about that so but that's about Dragon Age Origins. Then one of the English projects that I made is Freelancer, which was doing okay-ish, not not great, but okay-ish. Um, um, here there's the first note t uh, saying that the, that it's spiky. What what I mean by spiky is that um, there have been a lot of that the views have been very non-continuous and basically locally. That, 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 that only makes sense for ma mathematicians, so let me try to explain it in a different way. Basically, you could see that most days really nobody was watching this at all, and then on a few days there were multiple hours of people binge-watching it. Well, but, but, but it was just individual people, probably, who watched a few episodes, then came back a few days or weeks later, watched some more. So that's what I mean with spiky. You can really see that there was only individual people watching this, and they were basically binge-watching it and not one episode a day or something. So um, that's what I mean with spiky. That, 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 that'll be a note for quite a lot of projects because quite a lot of projects of mine have been only watched by by a few people. So um, that's that, that's sort of the most noteworthy behavior there. Aside from that, I think um, the way that the game was was pretty was pretty great. Ignoring that there was actually supposed to be a final exploration. Uh, exploration segment after the end of the game where I went through every system. I actually recorded that, but then there were issues in, in the recording and basically uh, my entire commenting um, my entire commenting piece was, was sort of gone, which is not that great, so I decided against, uh, against, um, against doing it at all. Actually not my commenting was gone, the, the in-game audio was gone, so there was only commenting and uh, so there was only the commenting piece, and I really, um, it felt really weird that there was space battles going on with lasers flying everywhere, and then I was calmly talking a little bit in between, but nothing really happened. So I sort of didn't re record that because I had other things to do at the time and just um, cut it, even though I said in the last episode that I was gonna do it. Nobody was complaining about it, so. Alright. Um, anyway, I think that went okay, but not that great. I mean, it's like almost a year old now, so I would expect it to perform better, it didn't, so there's that. I'm gonna ignore Gothic and Gothic 2, these are Western R RPGs, very German dominated West Western RPGs, the first one was sort of okay, the second was bad, but um, there were some issues with uh, glitch graphics in the first episode that I only saw um, in the post-processing when, when, when I already had recorded a few episodes, so there was some issues there, so I can understand that people stopped watching this after the beginning, but still, I think it did a good job here, but really, I I had no indication of seeing the glitch graphics because they didn't appear in-game, in but only after it. So, um, yeah, anyway. Then another interesting um, pair of series which uh, concerned Hearthstone, which was uh, the Hearthstone tournament that I'd done about one and a half years ago, something like that together with a bigger YouTuber called Damakash and then later I did a sort of league format with uh, with other people. Um, both of these had, had been okay, the average view time is sort of okay-ish and there was a lot of interesting user interaction during the during the run so and it was really fun for me to to comment Hearthstone games. I actually haven't touched Hearthstone in a few months because I think it's going into the wrong direction and really tries to go to the whole crazy, insane RNG route that I really don't like. So, I haven't been playing much Hearthstone recently. I don't know if I'm gonna do another um, league or tournament format in the next months, but um, we'll see that. It'll probably be in German though, so don't get your hopes up there. Um, so let's move on to the next one. Um, Homeworld, yeah, that's actually a little bit weird. I mean, Homeworld was was the first series that I brought up on my channel, and up until the, up until this date now, it's still the most successful one, uh, considering the view time and also that it was only 20 videos. So the average is really insane. Um, I could especially see great attention in the series when the remake was announced and during the release of the remake, some people were apparently watching this, even though it wasn't the remastered. 
Um, personally, I wish I could have been better here because there were a lot of audio issues and because it was my first series, sort of, I, I still had a lot of things to learn, so I really wish I could have been better here. Um, with 2, there wasn't so much of an issue. The performance is still really great and um, I was actually okay too, so that I have really no issue with that. But I tried to solve my the issues that I had with Homeworld by doing also the remastered a few months ago. But really, the audience didn't 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 want to watch that at all for some reason. I don't know. Apparently, the interest in uh, in in Homeworld has 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 really died down hard uh, now that it's uh, over one year uh, after the remastered was was released, and really no one was interested in watching that anymore. But really, I think gameplay and um, and and commenting wise, I was I was really like I wished. Uh, I were in Homeworld 1, so I don't know. I really, I was really, I was really very negatively surprised about the performance of Homeworld Remastered because I think it should have been better. I mean, Homeworld was sort of my biggest leg in the past, and I said, oh, when I just do Homeworld Remastered, people will love it, right? Apparently not. That's weird. I mean, it hasn't been out for very long, it's only been out for a few months, but really, it's kind of bad. Anyway, let's move on to the next one, Knights of the Old Republic, where, which was sort of the project that got me into making a decision on whether I wanted to do um, Let's Play in German or English, because there I really do love the voice. I really do love the voice actors in there, and so I had the English voice uh, acting in the background uh, for the dialogues, but basically the entire overlay and my commenting was in German. People didn't respond to that at all. No surprise, because for most for, for most people it's probably too it was probably too confusing. For me, it really wasn't, but um, I'm sort of in the uh, privileged position to um, to really have both languages available uh, at a whim, and um, my job sort of um, also supports this. So um, for me, it was nice, but apparently only for a few others. So after that, I decided to I I I was I promised people that I would do it either in English or in German. To which the Germans probably hoped that I'd only do stuff in German now and stop with the whole English stuff, but. Um, other projects came and, uh, and I said I couldn't pre present it in German because I don't have the German version for that, so I'm gonna do it in English. Screw you. I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. So, yeah, that's that. Then the next big block, sort of all of are pretty similar, is about the Mass Effect games. Um, yeah, it's a little bit weird. Again, um, the performance is kind of really bad and way below average. Uh, for Mass Effect 1 it really wasn't quite as bad, but that was the most recent that I did and it had the least amount of technical difficulties because I got a new a new gaming system before doing that. Also did it with mods, so the, so the graphical fidelity was much better than Mass Effect, than Mass Effect Vanilla was, was, was capable of. And during the run there was some interest, there was like one person is, especially who was basically watching it daily and, and, and commented on it, was, which was really nice. But after after the run, really nobody took interest in that. Sadly, um, I really loved it. I really loved all of these. I realized that in Mass Effect 2, there were some. I, I made some progress uh, during the during the Let's Play with regards to audio, so that so that slightly became better during the run. And for 3, there was some really issue, for the, there were some real issues with performance because I could barely record it at, at 20 FPS, and 20 FPS really does make you a little bit sick, and especially if you're in, if you're so inclined. So I realized that there were performance issues, but I think that from my side and from what I was from, from what was available to me, I did it as best as I can. And I've watched either of these many times, probably more than uh, people watched it. But I don't appear because I can watch it off, uh, offline. Anyway, so that was sort of Mass Effect. The entire the entire block was sort of very disappointing to me. There's a new Mass Effect coming out. I'm aware of that, but because of issues that I'll be talking about later, I'll probably not be able to do it on release. So um, I'm not sure if I even if I were able to, I would really do it because I've sort of had fallout with Bioware that um, I don't really have to talk about here, but. Um, I can't really promise that I'm gonna look into Mass Effect Andromeda when it comes out. Uh, anyway, let's move on to the next one. Master of Orion. Yeah, let's actually start with uh, Master of Orion 2 because that was the first one I did. Uh, it was pretty solid, to, to be honest. Um, it also sort of was the second, um, the second Let's Play that I did fully in English and 
I think, I think I was doing a good job. I could have done a better job with the micromanagement of the building queues, as uh, some people made me aware of. But really, it's, there's always a there's always the question of um, if you try to optimize it too much, then people will just get bored with you always thinking about you know, what do I have to do. And if you just use automatisms, then there's really not so much of an issue about that. So there's that. Um, but I think gameplay-wise, it was going really well. Um, not perfect, but really well. So that was pretty successful, especially after the remakes were announced. Some people were apparently looking into Mass of Orion 2 again. And then when the remake came out, I did uh, three series on the pre-release versions. So nobody really watched that. Two of them were live streams anyway, and one had a really bad quality because it was my first live stream. So um, most of the view time here actually doesn't fall to the three uh, pre-release playthroughs that I made, but rather to the tutorial-like videos that I made, like the two um, discussing um, ship design videos and the uh, discussing all the available races in the game video. They probably account for like two-thirds of the view time together. I mean, especially one of my uh, ship design videos is, 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 is sort of my biggest uh, video in in terms of view time at this point already so and and it's reasonably new it sort of kicked uh, the homeworld videos uh, to the curb interestingly and um, so most view time is actually not on the uh, on the pre-release playthroughs but actually on these tutorial like videos um, I really liked coming back to the game uh, every every other version to see how it was going and in order to also prepare for the release which was sort of the first game that I really did a playthrough on uh, release day four, so um, that was interesting to see. I mean, I received quite quite a lot of attention for both the videos here and also for the release playthrough. Assuming that, considering that I record this basically a week after the last episode of the of this playthrough was uh, was brought online, it's really looking great with uh, with regards to the performance. Uh, so it was a crazy ride, as I as, as I wrote here. Uh, but I've seen a more than usual fall off in view time after the first episode, which I can sort of understand because this is a new game. Some people were just watching this not to watch the complete playthrough, but to just uh, make their opinion on whether they wanted to buy it or not. So they probably stopped uh, after after some time. Which um, there's a big fall off for me in in um, in views uh, with regards to the first video and uh, the and the later videos. Oh, of a series, of course. Some some people watch it for a minute and then say, "No, that's that that guy's not for me." But here, I could really also see it in the view time, which wasn't quite as um, quite as a big factor in all of my other projects before. So that's sort of I think that's that's because it was on release, so people were just watching uh, a few minutes just to get a feeling for the game and to Im inform themselves about it. So that's okay. I just noticed it here more than uh, for the others. So yeah, that was really that was really nice doing that. Um, um, we'll see what I'm gonna what kind of sort of conclusions I'll draw from that. Anyway, let's move on. I'm not going to talk about Minecraft. I don't think I'm gonna go back to Minecraft. Didn't really. I had some fun with it, and it was fun doing it with other people, but really people didn't pick it up at all. So nope. Um, another interesting series, Mountain Blade Flores, which is one of these genre mixes that seem to be resonating with my audience pretty well. Um, and as I wrote down here, pretty evenly d distributed interest, which means it's not spiky. You can really see that uh, there was a there was a there was a continued interest in that, or maybe just more than one person was watching it, and they were starting at different times, so that sort of the spikes evened out to sort of a, a continuum more. Um, I really wanted to do that because I wanted to tell this um, story of the guy who started with basically nothing and became something. So um, that was really nice to do. Uh, it was a language mix that I really didn't want to do, but uh, the mod Flores really isn't available in German and even Mountain Blade uh, Warband, the German version, isn't really great, so I decided to just uh, translate all the English text and, uh, and, and stuff, so I think it was okay on that on that regard and the audience seems to have been accepting it reasonably well so all right so on to the next one which is a weird project to look at Neverwinter Nights because I was basically starting to um, sort of uh, write off RPGs for me because 
as you can see from the other projects here, they have been really not going too well. Like Knights of the Republic, Mass Effects, and Gothics too. So at this point, I was basically saying, why, why, are, not, why are people not watching RPGs? I love RPGs. I love doing RPGs, but um, somebody, somehow nobody really wants me to wants me to uh, wants to watch me doing that. Then Neverwinter Nights came, and it actually gained decent interest. But on, but that but that only really started about a year after the initial run. After the initial run, it was sort of in a similar bad position as Mass Effect, with really no one in, no one watching this. But recently, which after year after, after initial run is was pretty recently, it was sort of becoming more more regular for people watching this for for some reason. I have really no idea why, and it's really confusing. It, and it's really confusing for me for why actually Neverwinter Nights works and the other one do, don't. Maybe it's a language barrier with the Mass Effect. Um, here I already sort of voiced all, all of the uh, all of the NPCs, which some people may have found funny or something. I I like doing it, of course, but uh, not something that I'm look that, that I look forward to doing because it's also very um, very taxing. But really, I'm not really sure what's going on here that that really works so well. Which was sort of one of my reasons for why I took a look at demographics. So I'm I'm going to talk about Neverwinter Nights in the demographics section later. So I really didn't understand that. Another RPG here that's, that's coming up next is Hero of Evermore, which has sort of a similar curve. Basically, also about a year after the initial run, the interest started to gather and just kept at a steady pace ever since for some reason. So. I'm really not sure where this is all coming from. I mean, right now, if, if, if we look at the average uh, view time, that's it's really great. It's one of my top threes, actually, better than 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 freaking Mass of Orion. But um, why does it only start up uh, one year after release? And also, um, I personally don't like the series as much because the sound quality was bad. Uh, I'm 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 so sorry for that, but, but still, people were, were watching this. And it's another RPG. Yeah, it's a different kind of RPG than the other RPGs I've been doing. Also, I had to voice voice characters here, so I'm really not sure what's going on there. Maybe because it was a little bit less serious than for Mass Effects and Gothics. Maybe, maybe, maybe that's why people liked it. I don't, I don't really know. Anyway, um, let's go back to another to another 4X game, uh, Sid Meier's Alpha Centauri: Alien Crossfires. The um, game here, which is too long a title, so I just um, took the uh, shorthand for that. Um, the viewer behavior is very spiky, but the average is pretty okay. I mean, every video in the series was was pretty long to begin with, so um, it sort of benefits from that also a little, but um, was was doing okay, and I think gameplay-wise I was doing really good there, so yeah, not really much more to say about that. It's, it's not on the same level as Master of Orion is, but still people seem to have been watching it. Mm. Settlers 3, also an interesting game series, which uh, you may be aware sort of a let's play together with uh, um, Don Krümel and uh, a few other people who have been involved there regularly, which we basically play every week and every other week we record it and then um, bring it online. Um, the performance has had been really solid and I've also seen some seeding effects of people from uh, Don Krümel's channel coming over and stuff. So. That evolved and fluctuated a lot over time, but I really liked I really liked playing a series and also got some <coughs> sorry, <coughs> and I also got some um, some attention from the audience for it, so that's kind of nice. Star Citizen, yeah. Um, in the beginning, in the first few episodes, it was it was doing really really well. Then, because the episodes came the became more irregular because there wasn't really more stuff to show because CIG fixed the bug where we could use ships in, um, that we um, got via Arena Commander in the PU and this way I really didn't have many new things to show so it just made it become more irregular. Um, the interest sort of died down and became really spiky. And it's also going to be a real shame that I'm not going to be able to present 3.0 as I'm be talking about in a minute or maybe maybe 10 minutes or so. but. Um, did go really well for I mean it's sort of a pre-release game so it didn't do quite as well as Master of Ryan did but it was doing fine so as that I, I would really like to continue the series but um, currently I really can't and in the near future I also won't be able to continue it so it's a shame but I plan to continue it if, if I have the chance to do it anyway 
Uh, Warlords Battle Cry, another weird genre mix that also got picked up reasonably well. So, really not much to much to say about this. Uh, compared to Neverwinter Nights and Secret of Evermore that I talked about earlier, this really didn't have the one year wait phase. It had some interest during the run, and then just it just it just it just it just continued from there. It didn't have a spiky behavior for a year before before starting to, to pick up interest. Not sure why that is, but we're gonna take a look at the demographics here in a second too. And then uh, final one, Wing Commander Prophecy, which was actually my first English project. Um, I think my um, commenting performance was a little bit subpar, but it was still okay-ish. Gameplay-wise it was pretty good, but um, really the interest wasn't quite as high as I hoped to, and uh, it also was very spiky. Still, on a per video basis it's still better than Freelancer, but it has al already, uh, but it has also been out for a longer time, so... Anyway, that's that. Then here we have sort of the total view time accumulated by these, which is not the view time that I talked about in, 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 in the slides earlier, because there were some special videos that I omitted here. So that's not all. I think the other view counter was like. Let me go back there. Uh, 580. Yeah, but there's there's really not that much missing. There were some special videos, announcement, and stuff that I didn't um, that I didn't add to the, to either of of these individual projects. So there's that. There's also a lower number of videos because of that because I didn't count some of the unlisted videos that I did some of the earlier projects. Like there was. One try at at Neverwinter Nights that was done before the first um, official series, which was Homeworld, and they're still there, but they're unlisted and they're really not that great. So here the number of videos is slightly lower than uh, what I talked about earlier. And uh, then for comparison, we get uh, this average um, number here, which is sort of um, just the average of the values in this column here as a sort of indicator of what. What would an average series for me be like? But it's a sort of very misleading number because basically um, it doesn't take the number of videos in each project in into account. So it's just an average about these. Um, the number right next to it is actually just the um, total view time of, of the channel divided by the total number of videos here. So that, that would actually be sort of the average view time per video more like and not the average of the average uh, of, the, of the, the projects. But this is just so to give you some some indication of what I would consider to be okay uh, regarding projects. So, yeah, or solid at least. But um, I still have the issue of uh, quite a few projects being vastly out outperforming others. So that's still an issue, as we're gonna see in the diagrams that I'm gonna show you now. So this is basically the, the, the total view time, um, and um, all of these all of these colors correspond to the individual projects. Um, it actually starts here and then it goes left. So this first one would be Dragon Age, Freelancer, Gothic, Gothic 2, Hearthstone, and and, and, and and so on. Biggest ones are still Homeworld and Homeworld 2. But it's but it's uh, better than it was a year ago. Basically, a year ago, Homeworld and Homeworld 2 together were basically accounting for more than f for more than two thirds of the of of the total view time. And um, in between, a few other projects have 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 been have been um, doing a, a good job of catching up. Like Secret of Evermore back here, uh, Warlords Battlecry too, and then all the Master of Orion stuff is also on 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 the go. So it's looking much better and not so one-sided as it was a year ago. If we take uh, if we take a look at the average uh, view time per video, it's still dominated by Homeworld and Homeworld 2, but even there we can see that some other projects have been doing reasonably well. Anyway, <coughs> that was basically that. Because um, these numbers didn't satisfy me enough anymore, I also, I've also i also taken a look at demographics in order to take a look at why some projects seem to be performing really well, even though the genres didn't didn't perform well to be well enough to begin with, with, which was sort of an issue for Neverwinter Nights and also sort of Evermore to some extent. And also I wanted to find out why Warlords Battlecry was doing so well, which um, I didn't really expect to. So also take a look at the demographics. So I have prepared something something for you here. Um, in order to explain this again, here's just a name. Then I'm taking a look at four 
demographics for this. So ba ba basically, YouTube can can tell you um, into which demographic the, uh, your viewer falls. There are actually more than the four that I'm displaying here. There's actually also a um, 17 minus demographic. I think it starts at like 12, 12 to 17 or something. Um, I omitted that because the, because everywhere it was basically below um, two percent in most cases. There are a few e exceptions where I talk about the really young demographic, but uh, normally they're sort of irrelevant to me. So that's that. This is sort of this is what in what uh, what in the next minutes I'll be calling the younger demographic because it's younger than I am and it's not really my core demographic, which would actually be this one. This is the demographic where, me, where myself, where, where I would actually fall into myself. And since I make things that I like, I would assume that also people of comparable age would also like it. So that would sort of be my sort of target audience, if you want to call it that. And as you can see in the average view numbers, that actually seems to be a re reasonable good assertion. Then there's the older demographic, where there's also some reasonable, um, some reasonable, um, some reasonable view time happening. And then there's older demographics that, that, in most cases, really not much is going on, with some notable exceptions that I go into too. Here again, there's a view time. In this time, it's in in thousand minutes and not just minutes. Um, basically, I think uh, st st statistically speaking, all numbers below like 20 or 25k are probably irrelevant because, as we can see in the first two. They're pretty much dominated by individual persons, as you can see here. There was, there was there was probably just some individual people watching the entire series and not much else, which we can see for the for the projects with the lower with the lower view time count. That that's that's just dominated by by individual people too much, and the in individual people are probably part of my core audience. So it's there's there's really not much that, that I can learn about these from here because they haven't been that successful. So I'm not going to talk about these further. Anyway. Um, let's take a look at the average first before discussing the other ones. The average over my entire videos is sort of like almost 50% into the into the into the core audience. Then about a fur, about a f about one in four for the younger demographic. A little bit less than one in four for the uh, older, and then uh, some some outliers on both sides. So uh, let's take a look at how um, individual projects compare to that. You can see this dark green group, which is sort of the, uh, I would call it that the, it hits my core demographic group really well because the, um, my, my, my target, demo <laughs> I try it again. My core demographic is sort of has a very high count here. And there are some outliers in the slightly younger and slightly older, but sort of I can see that it is dominated by people that respond to gaming in a similar way that I do. So really, we can see that in Homeworld and Homeworld 2, it probably just resonated with my core audience really well, and they looked at it, and well, because also the view time for them is is pretty high. They of course also 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 contribute to the average really well. With Secret of Elmo, I was actually a little bit surprised because you may think that because it's a Super Nintendo game. It w it it would it it might um, respond to a younger audience more because these these consoles were for kids, right? But actually, the kids that played these uh, when they were younger are actually now in uh, sort of this demographic, maybe this one. So um, actually, this SNES doesn't seem to be um, doesn't seem to be contributing to a younger audience, but rather to the same audience that I've been trying to um, trying to reach anyway. So um, that was that. That was interesting for me to to see. Um, something I didn't talk about during the average is actually the um, female demographic. Yeah, there's actually women watching, but um, not quite as much. They're actually looking at like seven percent in total. There are some noteworthy exceptions where the where um, the numbers are higher. So that one was actually one of them, where it's just like sitting at like nineteen percent. Um, these are always percentage of hundreds. I didn't say that, but it should be obvious. So, um, yeah, for mo most of my other projects, the female audience just doesn't exist. Like, even for the Hearthstone League videos, even though there were some female players, they apparently didn't watch that. Um, and also for others, um, it really doesn't exist, but uh, I'll talk more about that when time comes. But forevermore, it was way higher than than than, than normally. Then there's also some other groups that I 
that I tried to make out like for Master of Ryan 2. It seems to be resonating less with the younger audience but more with the slightly older audience which makes sense because it came out in... When did it actually originally came out? 94? Something like that. So apparently you, you even reach older gamers with that and my group because we probably played it when we were really young. They played it when they were becoming just young adults. So this is, an, this is an older classic, so the audience should also be older, right? So that does make some sense. There are even some, some of the even older people who are watching this, so that, that, that totally makes sense, right? Um, let's take a look at Settlers 3 next, which I was a little bit surprised to see that it actually seems to hit the younger audience pretty well. Because when it came out, it was sort of... It sort of fell into my generation, so it should hit this one. It all, it, there, there's also a lot, lot of interest here, but apparently there's also quite a, quite a big interest in the younger uh, demographic. My explanation for this is sort of um, that the Settler franchise continued after that, so it kept uh, it, it also kept younger demographics engaged in the in entire series. They may not have been very satisfied with the later installments of the series, as were the original. Uh, people playing Settlers 3, so they tried out the older ones and said, "Oh, Settlers 3 is actually actually kind of nice." So they um, they fall in here. That's sort of my explanation for that. Um, there's something similar going on with the Neverwinter Nights, I think. Um, it looks more like the dark green group, but it has a lot uh, a lot more. It if I were to if I were to plot a curve of that, it has more outliers compared to the bell curve here. So, um, it hits more younger people and also older people for some reason. Uh, so, I added it to the blue group, though the, though the difference between the blue and the dark green is really minimal, I admit. Um, so, also here the amount of younger people watching this is actually also younger. I feel so old. I'm 28. I feel so old. I, I call 18 to 24 year olds young. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, anyway, um, so... My, my assumption here would also be that the franchise was uh, did go on after this. Like there was Neverwinter Nights, there, there were the add-ons, there were Neverwinter Nights 2, there was, all, there was also the uh, MMO in Neverwinter. So I guess this way it also brought younger people into this. So what's really strange here though for me is actually that um, the female demographic is way above average, like almost a third. And they're all sitting in this younger demographic for some reason. I have, I have, I have really no idea what, how that happened. Basically, this this age group is more female audience than than male audience for some reason. I have really no idea how that happened, but it's but it's very interesting to to, to note this. Anyway, um, let's move on. I sort of skipped Wallace Battle Cry here because it was sort of in the yellow group, um, which hasn't even. Which, where the younger demographic actually becomes the main audience here, um, which I sort of try to explain with that this sort of uh, RTS RPG hybrid games like Warlords Battlecry, which came from an RTS side and added roleplay elements into that, sort of became the mobile genre later that the young audience really seems to love. I mean, I also enjoy watching it, but I really have no interest in playing them, but um, sort of seems to resonate well with the younger audience, so um, I think that's sort of a reason for that. MOBAs happened later and then people started to look into historical games maybe. I don't know. But um, that's sort of interesting that there was actually a younger audience here. I didn't really expect that because I also would have expected that to only be a pretty niche game interesting uh, to only sort of my demographic because we knew about it when we were growing up and thought it was an interesting hybrid game. But apparently younger people not know, know about it too. Well, good for you. Good for you guys. Anyway, uh, another similar issue is happening with Mountain Blade Flores. The game is actually not that old. I think it came came out in like 2004 or 5? No, probably even later. So probably just a larger number of younger people know about it because the game isn't that old. So um, there's even 5% in the even younger audience for some reason. So um, I would always have thought that games like these were something that only the older demographic would really enjoy, but um, apparently I underestimate the younger people, so good for you again. You enjoy good games. Good for you. Uh, anyway, and then there's the Master of Orion uh, remake stuff, which was actually pretty interesting. Sort of, sort of, um, this belongs to Master of Orion and not to Floris. 
<coughs> sorry. Um, anyway, um, they seem to fall sort of into the borderline between the dark green and the blue group because they do have a sort of broader audience than the green group has, which sort of m mainly resonates with my core audience, but uh, as some outliers, this basically resonates with the core audience, the older guys and younger guys too, to almost um, similar extent, so I put it into the blue group. Um, um, there's really not that much difference between the pre-release and the release versions. Probably um, the, the tutorial-like videos also attracted an even younger audience because they seem to they, they have an even bigger uh, an even bigger percentage there. So wow, there's that. Also because it's a new game, also young people are are taking a look at it. Although I don't think they'll enjoy it as much, but they 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 at least try to take a look at it. So. Um, both of these seem to be hitting a broader audience than Master of Orion 2 did, because Master of Orion 2 is sort of a very, very respected game that um, the young people just can't appreciate, right? Right? Right. So, there's that. So, I just wanted to talk about that. Of some strange um, demographics uh, observations that I made. Not sure what sort of conclusions I'll draw from this. I'm still thinking about that. I just wanted to present you the numbers and um, give you something to think about because I've been thinking about these a lot. Um, for now, I think I'll just continue like I want to continue in the first place, which is try to reach this audience because, well, I, I'm there and I'm not trying to change in order to cater to someone else. I'm sorry. If you like it, of course, you can. You're, you're very welcome to stay, but, um, uh, well, I think it's really interesting because um, we're always told that the young audience is sort of, uh, so, so the even younger audience is sort of the main demographic in YouTube anyway. They don't seem to be watching me though. And I would assume that the older the demographic becomes, the less uh, viewers on YouTube uh, there are. So I, find, so I find it interesting that actually the correct people found me in the first place. So that's kind of nice. Did that make sense? I'm not sense. I'm not. I'm, I'm not sure. Let's go back to the slides, shall we? So, da, da, da. all right. So I said I was gonna be some announcements. So I'm gonna do that. Announcements, yo! So as I talked about earlier, and as some of you may have noticed, uh, about a year ago I bought a new tower system that uh, enabled me to do recent games and also highly modified older games and higher graphical fidelity than I could before. So I had I really had much fun playing around with that and doing that. However, that's however coming, of course. Um, my my job will require me to move to the U.S. for almost the entire next year. Basically, starting from December this year, I will be in the U.S. up until October the year after that. And I really have doubts that I'll be able to bring my new system with me because it's a fucking tower and um, it's a sort of too big to to, to, to to be counted as luggage and I also need other things of course so I really doubt I'll be able to bring it with me and as a result I will most whoops I will most likely have to move back to my old gaming laptop again which is a few years older uh, it, it still works fine but it overheats re uh, really easily so um, yeah there's that so I'll probably find some money to get a new laptop at some time in um, in quarter two of next year, but probably not much before that. So, in, in, in addition, because moving to the US for such a long time also also uh, requires a lot of preparation. Uh, I also have less time in the in the next month, so I'll probably stick to the one video a day rule. I have been doing more than that during the release of Master of Ryan because I wanted to really push it out without. Um, without um, stopping all of my other projects at, at, at the same time, so there I was okay with doing more than one, but I probably won't be able to do that in the next months, because moving is pretty difficult. I actually was at the same place that, I, that I'm gonna go through um, a few years before that, but only for two months, so really nobody no, nobody noticed it, because I was basically pre-producing the series that was going on there, I think it was Knights of the Old Republic, and then just uh, had it... Um, had it um, had it become available online uh, by by itself, so that really was no issue there. Probably nobody really noticed that I was gone from Germany, but um, anyway, um, uh, pre-producing for almost a year is really not um, possible. So I'm not really I'm not really sure what to do. Well, I'm 
I have one idea that I, that I can do, basically, which um, I'm talk about now. Uh, you don't have to worry about the projects that are currently already underway, like Dragon Age Origins and Star Wolves will not suffer from any change, no matter what happens, because both of these are already recorded or will be done uh, by the time that I have to go. So I'll have no issue with just publishing them, especially uh, e e even though some of these will uh, appear after uh, after December. So um, those will not suffer from that because I'll have, I will already have them ready. But because of the um, system change, I really can't do Star Citizen anymore. And also I have joystick issues at the moment because my stick is sort of really old and uh, doesn't do the job really really well anymore because sort of trying to find... Um, yeah, uh, tr trying to, to, to calibrate it correctly is a nightmare. So I'll probably not do Star Citizen uh, anymore. For the time being, I mean, the only next big uh, changes will be coming in 3.0. 3.0 will be coming at the end of the year, maybe, maybe sort of next year, realistically. And by that time, I'm I'm not sitting at the same system anymore, so I really can't do that. But uh, I would like to play it, but uh, yeah, well. Anyway, uh, as a result, I'll probably move... No, another thing. Uh... I'm not sure if in the next month I'll find time to pre-produce yet another project using the current system. So, um, because I still have some shorter, newer games that I would like to do, maybe I'll find some time to, to actually pre-produce them and then just uh, bring them out later. Uh, but I'm not, but but I don't really know about that yet. Um, if if I don't, then the next, the realistic next uh, pr project that you should expect and that the laptop is able to handle would be things like Heroes of Might and Magic 4. Yes, that, that, that is a 4, not a 3 or 5. Uh, Language-wise, I would be flexible there, because uh, the other ones, would uh, I would basically lean into English. I'd probably do that in German, I'm afraid, unless you say, No, I want to see you do it in English. And, and you're louder than the Germans, then I might consider that. Um, but uh, language-wise, I would be flexible there, at least. Other games that I looked into already a year ago uh, was uh, Warhammer 40k Chaos Gate. Since there's no real German version for that available to me at this point, uh, I would probably do it in English. So, there's that. I don't really want to present this game because it's very old and underappreciated game, I feel. Um, also, Sacrifice started to work again. Yay! Uh, for some time I had issues with the GOG version not really working. Um, but it does work now, so I could do that and I'm really looking forward to doing that at some point. Um, Duty doesn't have the German version, so I'm not sure if I'll be able to do it in German. Uh, my sort of rule for now was space stuff is okay to do it in English, um, other stuff do it in German. Um, Sacrifice isn't really space stuff, but I really don't have a German version, so... Well, I'll see what I'll do about that, maybe I can sort of patch it to German, I'm, I'm not sure. And also Dungeon Keeper 2, yeah, it has similar issues to Sacrifice, but I'm also looking forward to playing that because it's a real fun game. Um, but also, if you have other uh, older games that you would like to see me do, I would love to hear comments and thoughts about that in the comments. So just uh, just let me know what you might find interesting, and I'll probably know about it and uh, like to do it. Because I know some pretty weird games, like you've seen with... Uh, by the time this um, th this video comes out, you'll already have seen the f you, you might have already seen the first uh, few episodes of Star Wolf, which is a really weird game, but uh, I still like it. So anyway. Thank you for your support this far, and I hope that um, we can iron out these issues in the near future. And continue to have uh, a wonderful time together, you know, you know? Um, I'd really like you to stay. Uh, I don't really have any easy, easy solutions for the language issue. Uh, once I open that, that, particular, um, that particular Pandora's box that I realized that it was always going to be an issue, so... But we'll figure it out. Yes, of course. Okay, good. <clears throat> so, I think I've talked enough for now. Uh, thanks for sticking through it uh, to the end. Or just skipping to the end, bastard. Um, then uh, I hope to see you another time. Have a good one.